There are a number of ongoing projects in Igbogbo Bayeku in the Ikorodu area of Lagos. One road, however, has become more of a ghost town as motorists barely make use of it in spite of its importance. With businesses folding up and residents moving out, our eyewitness calls for attention with this photo. Igbe Road in Igbogbo Bayeku is in a state of disrepair with potholes and undulating terrains. It's been a while since the last train fall, but it doesn't seem so around this access. The road is an access to several communities. But since it became this degraded, nothing has been done by the Lagos state government to remedy the situation. I've been here for the past 20 to 25 years. But this road has been, has been bad for the past 10 years or 12 years. And then it disturbed a lot of businesses here because this road is a, it's an access road from here to Giti, from Giti to Ijede. People that is coming from Ijede, this is an, an access road for them to pass to Ibogo Junction. Then from Ibogo Junction, they can link Ibogo and then pass through Ibute where they can pass through Ipakudu. So it will ease the traffic of going to Sabo and people passing through garage. So if this, we thank God that this road has been awarded according to the information by the Lagos State Governor. It's going to increase the business here because a lot of houses are here. People are parking out because of this bad road. A lot of cars, a lot of, a lot of cars have been damaged because of this road. Even along, when you pass through this lake, eh, the road, the road cannot link because we have to be passing through the access road before you can, before you can get to Oreyo. Then after Oreyo, the whole place is bad to guilty. So we want government to, to, I mean, to assist us in doing it quick. The state of the road has affected everything about life and businesses here, slowing down drastically activities around this area. It affects me a lot because I came here three years ago and this place is very nice. I don't see any traces of broken here. But now even a vehicle or car cannot pass. And I have many customers. In a day, I, may, I see like 20 customers in a day. For me to get one customer now is very hardly. Everywhere is dry, very dried. Even, I'm here since morning. I see one customer, but I do find like 20 customers. And there is a road. Beside the Bay Road, there is one place called Estate. That is where those motors or Okada used to pass. And it's not even affecting only me. Even those, my neighbors here, most of them, they didn't come to shop. They are just pay, paying for trans, be transport, wasting transport, paying shop rent without even selling or anything. All of them, please, we just want to beg the government to help us and assist us on this road. Because they are not just coming. They have been coming since three years. We have not seen any change. They should just please and help us so that we can find something to eat in this area. See, now children are going to school. We are using this business to, to, to bring our children up, to pay the school fees, everything. But now, when there is no sales, how are we going to see money for school fees and to eat? Please, they should please and assist us. It affects the business negatively. When I mean negatively, we know, you know what it means. We are like, don't let me just stay home. Let me, let me just come out and see what is happening on the road. That is it. It's really like, we're, during the time of rainy season, everywhere is always sluggish. Before this would be like this, I do like, before morning tonight, I'm working till like 10, 20. But now, as this would be like this now, before morning tonight now, let's say just three tires, four tires. Because this road now, you have so many work, so many business. So, I don't need to talk too much. I need to beg, with the beg government to come and do this road for us. Further down the road is a ditch covered in water. It's become a dead end for motorists. In order to navigate through this stretch, you would need the bike which now cost over 100% of the initial price. From the junction, we carry Okada 200, 500, down to Oreo, which is supposed not to be so. When the road is good, we spend 15 naira for transport. 
But today we are spending 500 naira to carry a machine down to Oreo. It's not fair. How do you want us to do? When a lot of us are paying tax, how did government want to help us out? So we are appealing to them, they should come down and rescue our, us out of this road. Each time it rained, it becomes very impossible for even an Okada to ply this road, let alone to talk about the vehicles. It's unfortunate now that there is no vehicle park lying through this road, as you can see. And this place happens to be a, a very a link road. This place can, is, it goes as far as Ijebode. This place, this road, it links as far as Ijebode. So when it rains, the whole place becomes so flooded, even much more than what you are seeing behind me here now. Now, it has stopped raining in the past one month now, but you can still see the road. It's bad. There is nobody that can ply through this road. Even the trailers, the heavy-duty trucks are not ply it. We have an alternative route, which is even worse than this. You understand now? If you go any further down this way, you find out that the road is, is worse. It's nothing to write home about at all. We need, we need government to come and intervene. Whatever government of the past has been coming in, telling us, promising us one way or the other that they are going to intervene, they are going to do something about it. But yet, after the political campaign, nothing comes up thereafter. So the road is still left like that. Well, I would say fortunately, the governor spoke about this road like four days ago when he came for the Igbogbo Oba coronation. He talked about doing this road, but we are expecting him. Let us be hopeful that the road will be done this time around. Igbe Road, if constructed, would ease the traffic around major channels in Ikorodu and bring back life to the area. This is what the residents look forward to as the Lagos State Government Get set for 2017. It's becoming a case of one accident too many along the Kara Bridge of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Is the authority doing what they should do, especially now that the year winds down? We captured the scene of another accident barely two weeks after four lives were lost at almost the same spot. It's become a case of one accident too many, almost on the same spot, at the Kara Bridge, where an accident claimed four lives recently. Thankfully, this time around, no death is recorded, though it was a close shave with death for all 12 occupants of this bus after an encounter with this truck. They were almost thrown over the bridge, all thanks to the pavement which held them in place. For fate, this visibly shaken driver of the bus would have been no more, he tells us his experience. I was driving on my lane when all of a sudden, this truck hit my bus from behind. The impact almost threw me over the bridge into the river. We were 12 all together in the bus when the accident occurred. Fortunately, there was no death recorded. Only a few of us had minor injuries. After a short while, the fire service soon cleared the road for rather road users who are daily reminded of some chilly experiences of the past by the refugees that today line the roadside. There are several questions begging for answers, bordering on the state of our roads and truck plying them. Who monitors them? Who ensures the vehicles are roadworthy? As the festive season kicks in, it's expected that more attention is paid safety of lives and property. It's time we called it a day on Eyewitness Report for the week. we will very much love to hear from you, especially during the season. Share with us all those lovely moments, get-togethers and more. Send those photos and videos to our Eyewitness Portal. Until next week, when we hopefully should be back here, I am Chris LMs. Bye-bye.